as we see here, Mary and Suresh are playing with Mummy's perfume in the bedroom. Mummy smells the perfume and she's preparing dinner. So let's go to the first part of the question. It's asking, it's asking us to name the process. And of course, that process is diffusion. And really straightforward. It shouldn't be osmosis because there's no water being transferred from one point to the other. It is just the particles of perfume that's diffusing throughout the house and it gets from the bedroom to the kitchen. Part two, here we have to distinguish diffusion from osmosis. And these are the main reasons we have here. It does not require a partially permeable membrane, yeah. And the other reason is that, unlike osmosis, diffusion refers to the movement of any particle. Osmosis is exclusive to water. And those are the two main differences between diffusion and osmosis. And as we can tell, two marks, yay. And that's basically it. The next part. So here we're being asked to define active transport and the main part that we want to focus on is the against the concentration gradient and of course the use of energy. So you have the movement of substances unlike diffusion and osmosis, it is against the concentration gradient. So you are going from from low concentration to high concentration and that process requires an active input of energy. And then part two, one part of the body will lie in this small intestine. Any other answers you come up with, feel free to add it to the comments below. Let's have a nice discussion. And the next part Name the type of cell where, name the part of the cell, I should say, where active transport takes place, and that's your cell membrane. Um, there is a transport protein that works within the cell membrane to do all the active transport. But you can just say the cell membrane, that is sufficient. Now for part C. So Anna Nicole has difficulty breathing after running long distances. So what are the most important points here? The difficulty breathing. So something is going wrong with her breathing mechanism. But it happens after running long distances. So this is not a not an inherent issue, this is something that pops up with exertion, right? And she's being told of the situation, so of course he thought this. But if my problem is breathing, how is this could be connected to my circulation? So this is what you now have to explain. So you take several points, you can take several steps. So the first step, of course, would be to explain or describe what the pulmonary circulation is actually responsible for, what does it actually do, what, is, what does it actually refer to, and then you can talk about what the problems could mean. Like what is the impact of any problems that she may be having? How would this affect the rest of the body? 
So that's why you say the circulation has problems. This will impede the transport of oxygen and so on. And what would be the follow-up effect of that? Right? Blood is sent on the heart, stimulates the body, decreased concentration of oxygen. And then how does that connect to the problems breathing? And it would have to do with if less oxygen is being transported throughout her body, then she is going to have a problem getting energy to the various muscles in her body, including the muscles that allow her to breathe. And that then causes breathing problems whenever she exerts herself. Okay, so those are the four main steps. So here we have a similar question, but this one is focused on systemic circulation. And the process is about the same. The step, what is the systemic, systemic what is the systemic circulation responsible for? Right. What happens if you encounter problems? And what is the impact? What are the downstream impacts of these problems? And there you go. So if you need to stop and really look at the question again, you can pause it and compare to your answer. And here we essentially have a recall question where you have to state functions and the lymphatic system. So I have here three functions and any two would be sufficient. In this part of the question we are labeling a diagram of the respiratory system, the human respiratory system. And some labels have been provided, for example, the heart, and we have here our intercostal muscles between the ribs that uh, move the ribs during the breathing process. And we've been given three other labels, A, B, and C. And we are required to label them. And these are the labels. You use trachea, B, bronchus, and we have the last part, which is the alveolus. It's not the bronchiole because it's pointed to the sac-like structure at the end of the bronchiole, not the bronchiole itself. So the complete sentence says, on breathing in, the ribcage moves up and out, while the diaphragm flattens and moves downwards. Right, so in this part of the question, Mr. Speedy, Mr. Speedy is trying to remember the good old days when he used to be able to sprint and he started having problems. So let's take a look at what does respiration, aerobic and anaerobic respiration, how does this play into his problems? First, we're acknowledging the conditions under which anaerobic respiration occurs in humans. When does the human body system switch from aerobic to anaerobic? It does so when the muscles are not getting oxygen fast enough to meet its immediate needs. So you are putting pressure on your muscles, you're moving quickly and the oxygen isn't getting to the muscles fast enough to meet that need. So anaerobic respiration kicks in to give that little extra oomph that's needed to keep going. And that's what's happening over here. Now in Mr. Speedy's case, 
this point at which the body makes that switch happens really quickly. You don't want this to be something that happens early on. Because high concentrations of lactic acid, as we mentioned here, right, that causes problems, that causes cramping in the muscles. Whenever too much lactic acid accumulates in the muscles, and what is lactic acid? That is the product of anaerobic respiration. So he has to stop because too much lactic acid is in his muscles and that causes cramping. And he now has to stop so that he can now breathe heavily to clear the lactic acid from his system. And here we have to explain why heart rate increases during the sprint and it's essentially to increase the speed of provision of oxygen and glucose to the muscles as well as removal of increased concentrations. It's not just to provide oxygen and glucose, it's also to remove carbon dioxide and other waste products. So that's where your two marks comes in. Part four. Why is he breathing through his mouth? Just increase the volume of air that's getting to his lungs. That would then increase the concentration of oxygen being transferred to the blood. And of course, the blood can then transfer that oxygen to other parts of his body. In this case, its most important part is to the muscles so that the oxygen is used to carry out aerobic respiration of lactic acids so that it can be broken down to carbon dioxide and water and thus removed from his muscles. One mark, yes, I wrote a lot here. It's essentially just to give a little explanatory you can see that the smoking damages his lungs and his cardiovascular system. But you can also say something like it drastically, it drastically reduces his vital capacity. And this would be the additional note. And now for section B. So in this one, we had to do some labeling. We had to label the oviduct, the vagina, the prostate, and the urethra. And those are your labels. So this is your suggested answer for part A, part 3. And the suggested answer for A, for B, part 1. The stages of the birth process. If you need to pause to check, you will do so. And we are now going to take a look at the second part or the third part of the question, part C, C1, and C2. I'm jumping to C part 2. These are just some of the benefits of family planning to the country, but I'm sure that many of us here can come up with other answers. Feel free to share those answers in the comments below. So these are just some suggested answers. Again, you may pause to check against your answer and mark yourself. So here are the answers for A and for B. Right, we have the definition for biodegradable, we have the definition for landfill, definition for sewage, and definition for pollutant. It's essentially a recall question. 
and then we have the three hours reduce reuse recycle you were asked not to include reduce so we just provide the other two reuse and recycle and you don't just say reuse and recycle you give a little extra information some people might have written reuse and then describe what reuse means and then write the word recycle and then say what recycle means that also would be sufficient And for part B, just scroll up a little bit, part B, this is just one approach to answering that question as well. This is just one approach to answering this question. Any other suggestions for the answering of this question? Any other points that you think you like could be um, added to this question? Any other points that you would like added to this question or you would have added to this question, you can write in the comments below. Let's have a nice discussion amongst us. And now we are looking at the last part, part C, where we are describing the disease cholera. So we indicate that it's caused by the bacteria, the name of the bacteria, Vibrio cholerae, and we also Describe the signs and symptoms, watery diarrhea, rapid dehydration. You can add again, you can add further signs and symptoms in the comments below and ways to avoid it. Which comes down to public sanitation, personal hygiene. And now, in the case of cholera, because it's a foodborne and waterborne disease, I should this is very important right wash fruits and vegetables a lot of that a lot of it has to do with how you cook right how you prepare food so you have to wash fruits cook the food thoroughly boil water and that is for june 2011. those of you that have been browsing my channel would realize that Fast paper questions are not the only type of video that I do. I am also producing weekly videos explaining various biological concepts as well as going over the various types of drawings that are required at CXC level, both CSEC and CAPE level. That's another series I'm doing on a weekly basis. So you have another good reason to subscribe and turn on that notification bell all right so that's it for now 